Check, check.
Good morning, First United Methodist Church of Collingswood. Was that my dad? Good morning, dad. How are you? <laughs> if you guys would please stand with us and sing hymn number 267. It's in a hymnal if you'd like to use that, or certainly the words will also be on the screen. Come thou almighty king. seated. Good morning, church. It is great to be with you. Do a little switcheroo here. It's great to be with you here this morning, this, well, not quite hot yet, summer morning, right? I don't know how hot it's going to get today, but it's been pretty hot lately. But we're glad we're in here in a comfortable sanctuary. We're blessed to have this building, and we're glad that you're here joining us. Um, I just wanted to bring up a few announcements this morning. First of all, <clears throat> Pastor Scott and Meg and their four boys are on vacation. They've been away all week. Uh, he'll be returning tomorrow. So just pray for their safe travels. Um, actually, the boys are not away. It's just Pastor Scott and Meg. They're on a 15th anniversary vacation. So a nice, well-deserved rest for him, no doubt. But um, pray for their safe return. Um, I believe he should be back in the office on Tuesday. So I uh, wanted to mention that. <clears throat> also, um, we don't have any summer camp days coming up this week, but we do have some flyers for the children's summer camp days. Um, the next one, it looks like, is August 5th, Thursday, August 5th. And then there's another one on the 19th. So grab a flyer in the back and put those on your calendar. Also, there's a few flyers back there from Soul Cafe. Uh, Soul Cafe, if you're, if you're not aware, is an organization. Um, <clears throat> they just do a lot of service projects and um, food distribution and things like that. They're located out of Magnolia, and our church has been partnering with them for, for several years now. And they have a few events going on. One is their first annual fish fry. So if you're interested in that, there's a flyer back there. It's going to be on July 31st, Saturday. $12 per platter includes fried fish, cornbread, a beverage, and two sides. So it sounds like a pretty good deal. Um, you can pre-order, you can Venmo the, 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 the money there, and you can pick up curbside pickup. They have some seating as well. So um, pick up a flyer on that. <coughs> also, they're having a day of service on August 14th. That's another Saturday. Um, service projects from 8.30 uh, 
to 12.30, and then they're going to provide lunch from 12.30 to 1.30. They're outdoor and indoor projects, so if you can't be outside in whatever heat's going to be there in the middle of August, um, there are indoor projects as well. And again, there's a flyer out in the, in the narthex there for that as well. So go ahead and pick those flyers up to see what's going on in the coming weeks and take part in it. Um, that's what we're here for, right? We're here to be not just a body of Christ on Sunday morning, but we're here to be a body of Christ for each other and for our community seven days a week, right? So take part in what, what you can see out there, and we look forward to seeing you there. Um, and that is all I have. So I'm going to invite up a special guest who we all know and love, but we haven't seen in a little while. And I'm going to make sure that his microphone is turned on, and it is. Hello, hello. Just checking. One, two, three. They can hear you, Dennis. Good. So how are you doing today, Dennis? I'm doing great. I'm looking around, though. <laughs> what are you looking for? The big bald guy. Oh, Pastor Sam. Yeah, where is he? Well, he left, and, and he went to a different church. Oh, where? Woodstown. Woodstown? That sounds dangerous for a Dudley. Yeah, well, <laughs> anyway, so that's where he is. So who's here now? Well, now we have Pastor Scott. Where's he? Well, he's on vacation. How long has he, he been here? A couple weeks. I want his job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, okay. So who's going to preach today? Wait a minute. The skinny bald guy. Yeah, the skinny bald guy. Who's going to preach today? Hi. <laughs> oh, boy. So what's he going to talk about? Well, today he's going to talk about Jesus and how he fed a whole bunch of people with just a little bit of food. Oh, I know that trick. You do? It's a magic trick. No, it's not a magic trick. Yes, it is. I saw some, somebody do something like that before. Yes, but you know what? This story is from the Bible. It's not a magic trick. And you know, we know that if something is from the Bible, that it's true, because the Bible is God's word. So we never ever want to think that a story from the Bible is magic. It's always either a miracle or something special that Jesus did, and it's not magic. Oh. I was hoping to see a rat that comes out of the hat or something like that. No, no, no. Isn't he a magician? No, he's not a magician. Oh, okay. So anyhow, I want you to remember that, Dennis, that whatever is from the Bible is God's word, and we don't ever have to doubt that that's what God is saying and that, that that's the truth. Well, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Can I sing a song? Oh. You have a new one? Yep, got a new one. Was well, it a nice one? Well, compared to the others, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, so what's the song you're going to sing? And then, then we're going to go because... Yeah, the bald guy's got to preach. Yes, he does. Okay. So, okay. So, what's your song? It's called uh, Happy. Well, that sounds like a good song. Yeah, it is. Okay. Go ahead. Sing your song. I got to get ready. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Now, now, sing your song. I'm going to be in the choir. You are? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Sing your song. <coughs> I'm so happy, 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 happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Because Jesus is a friend of mine. Okay, okay, okay. That was very nice. Okay. Now, listen. Let's, let's say goodbye to everybody and let them get on with the show, right? Well, not the show. The story. <laughs> the magic trick. It's not a magic trick. Let him, let it, let's get on with the service, okay? Okay. Bye. See you later. Okay, okay. Well, let's talk some more. <laughs> Bye, Dennis. <laughs> Thank you, Linda and Dennis. We always appreciate when you come and share a few words with us. Um, as we're moving into a time of worship, um, I just want to, I want to invite everybody here to think about these next songs and think about how much 
we trust Jesus and we trust God. Because today's word talks about giving things away. And I think that many times when we're asked to give things away, it requires some trust. <clears throat> so we're going to start off <clears throat> with a praise song. And we're going to just show God how worthy he is. And then we're going to move into a song called Enough. And I want you to feel free to stand and sing. <clears throat> Raise your hands if you want to. Keep them down if you want to. Um, if you can't stand, you can sit and sing. But really think about the words. Praise our God and think about how he really is everything that we need. Whatever it is that he wants us to give away, it's okay because we still have him. Here we go. I will worship. I will worship with all of my heart. With all of my heart. And I will praise you. I will praise you with all of my strength. All my strength. I will seek you. I will seek you all of my days. All of my days. And I will follow. I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. You alone, how worthy of my praise. I will bow down. I will bow down and hail you as king. And I will serve you. I will serve you. Give you everything. Everything. I will lift up. I will lift up. My eyes to your throne. My eyes to your throne. And I will trust you. I will trust you. I will trust you alone. You alone. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. I will give you all my worship. Let them hear you. I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. All of you is more than enough for all of me, for every thirst and every need. You satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is more than enough. You're my supply, my breath of life, still more awesome than I know. You're my reward worth living for, still more awesome than I know. All of you is more than enough for all of me. For every thirst and every need, you satisfy me with your love, and all I have in you is more than enough.
You're my sacrifice of greatest price, still more awesome than I know. You're my coming King, you are everything, still more awesome than I know, and all of you is more than enough for all of me for every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all i have in you more than all i want more than all i want more than all i need you are more than they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it, and they followed him. And he welcomed them, and he spoke to them about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowds away so that they can go to the surrounding villages and into the countryside and find food and lodging, because we are in a remote place here. He replied, you give them something to eat. They answered, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, unless we go and buy food for this crowd. Uh, that was about 5,000 men. But he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. The disciples did so, and everybody sat down. Taking the five loaves and two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks, and he broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to set before the people. They all ate, they were satisfied, and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. That's God's word. And now I'm going to, in a moment, pray, but at one point... I'm going to be quiet. I know that's strange, but I'm going to be quiet 
because each of you, I'm sure, has very special, close to your heart prayer requests. And in that moment, you can all pray your own silent prayer, and then I'll continue. All righty, let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning knowing that you are in charge of everything. You love us, you care for us, you provide for us, you know our needs, you know everything about us long before we ever tell you. So Lord, we're gonna take a moment right now and share our individual request. Thank you, Lord, that you have heard those requests. And it doesn't matter if 10 people are praying or 10,000 people are praying or 10 million. You are in control. And we're not on hold. Wait 48 minutes for you to answer. We will wait for you to answer. We trust you to answer. And, Lord, I know there are lots of names. It's a long list on Traces of Grace, and I can't go all through that. But you know about them. But we do pray. We pray for hurting families. We pray for Sharon Bailey, for Nicole Zook, who had surgery on her foot. Father, for victims of the fires and the earthquakes and floods that are going on right now. And of course, the civil unrest. All these things are scary to us, but they're all part of your plan. And that's hard to understand, but they are part of what you have done and are in charge of. I pray, Father, for Sean this morning as he brings the message and he brings new light to this scripture. And all praise and all worship belongs to you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. So I'm not a tea drinker, but I have my tea with honey in it with me this morning because <clears throat> um, you might hear it a little bit. Yesterday, we were with the youth down at the beach all day, and in midwinter advance, which we usually go to, obviously, in the winter, not the summer, um, but we haven't met with them this year. They wanted to have a gathering, so they had a gathering down in Ocean City, and they asked if I would lead worship at that, and I was doing that, and um, three songs in, I, I paused, and somebody shared a testimony, and I came back, and my voice was just, like, gone. <laughs> I have no idea why. It just went, um, so... Fortunately, the walkers were there, and Will got up and pinched hit for me uh, for the last song, but got my tea with me this morning in case I need it. But let's eat. That's the series that we're in. Uh, I'm loving this series that, that Pastor Scott put together for us because I think eating with people, when we, when we gather with people to eat together, it's such a joyful thing, and it's such an intimate thing. And I love that, that Jesus did, and God still does, take that posture with us, that, that he, he's just saying, I love you. I want to be with you. Let's just sit and have a meal together. Let's sit and share some conversation. This is, this is God's heart for you. He wants to be with you. And so that's what we're looking at over these weeks, is just the times that Jesus spent time eating with people. And so this morning, as Pat already read for us, we're looking at, at this, this passage here in Luke. And the title of this morning is, Let's Give It Away. Let's Give It Away. <clears throat> now, when I started thinking about this, this passage, um, I admit, I kind of at first was like, man, what, what am I going to say? Like, this is such a familiar passage to so many people. And uh, I don't think anybody would disagree that this is important, that we, we spend our lives giving. And frankly, I think this is something that you guys are really good at. This is one of the things that I love about this church is your generosity. You're very good at giving where there's needs, and so I love that. But of course, I spent some time praying about it, and God's so good. He always shows us some things. So what I want to do today, instead of like spending some time really like teaching and digging through the passage like we often do, I want to highlight a few things, but I also want to share some of my own experiences where I feel like God has really worked these things into my, into my life in these ways as well. <clears throat> so God, we thank you for this morning. I know we've prayed already several times through this service, but, but we don't come and pray just because it's what we're supposed to do. We, Lord, I, I want to come because I, I need you. <laughs> Lord, I pray that you will um, speak through me with strength, speak through me with clarity, 
um, bring this message that you want to bring today to me and to all of us, Lord, that we can know you better, that we can walk with you more closely. So, Father, I, I just surrender this time, surrender myself to you for your glory and your use. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> so let's give it away. Let's give it away. Um, when I look at this passage that Pat just read for us, the first thing that I'm seeing is that it's about attitude. If we're, gonna, if we're gonna have anything to give away, if we're going to be able to give anything away, if we're gonna be able to take these opportunities to give it away, it starts with our attitude, the attitudes of our hearts. And I was thinking about, um, uh, some of you know this, my, uh, I, I have, over the past few years, I have this newfound love for backpacking. Uh, some might even call it an addiction. Um, <laughs> but I love getting out in the woods for a few days and just hiking miles and miles. And the first time that I went backpacking, I went with my two really good friends, Scott and Eli, and we did about 40 miles on the Appalachian Trail over four days. And um, I, <clears throat> going into the trip, I knew that there'd be other people out there. I knew that there were shelters you could stay at along the way, but I really honestly didn't want to see other people or be with other people. I was so looking forward to just spending this time with my friends and being able to talk with them. I was looking forward to the ministry that we would have with each other. And I didn't really want to be around other people. I didn't want other people to get in the way of what I wanted. <laughs> um, and so the first night we, we got to the shelter, the shelter was full, so we set up our tarp. There were some other tents and tarps and stuff around, and we ended up spending a lot of the evening just kind of talking to some of those people around, and it was okay. But honestly, I was kind of annoyed inside because, like I said, I felt like those other people were getting in the way of what I wanted with my friends. Um, so the next night, my experience was totally different because my attitude became totally different, and I had plenty of time to think about it on that day or for in the 15 miles or whatever it was that we hiked that day, um, and in the rain some of the time. But then we got to this, this, this second shelter, and this was a large shelter. And there was probably about 16 people staying there. But that night, man, we got a fire going. We were sitting around, hanging out, talking with each other. This one guy named Cable, trail name, not his real name, he, that's what you do out there. But he came up, he had stopped at Walmart that day and bought a pack of hot dogs and a salmon on a cedar plank. And so we put those over the fire and just kind of shared it. And everybody was eating together and talking together and hanging out together. And then everybody else went to bed and Cable and I ended up talking for like another hour. Um, got to share the gospel with them. I ended up giving my Bible that I had. Um, and it was just such a great experience. And then the night after that, the same thing happened. The night after that, it happened again. Um, got to meet a kid named uh, Pieces, who um, was, he was about 19, and he had a prosthetic leg, and he was doing about 65 miles with his dad. Um, and then I met a guy from Australia who, uh, I'm not kidding, sounded and looked and seemed like Gandalf. Uh, so that was really fun. Um, but when I got to the end of this trip, the thing that surprised me the most was that, or, or the thing that was, was the greatest joy, I think, for me, was all the people that I met along the way and all of the conversations that I got to have. And like I said, I got to share the gospel with people, gave the Bible away, got to pray with several people, and none of that would have happened. Um, got to learn a lot from people. None of that would have happened if my attitude had stayed stinky. <laughs> um, so it's got to start with attitude. So here's Jesus. And the disciples, the disciples had just gotten back from a ministry tour that Jesus sent them out on. I'm sure they were tired, and Jesus took them away, just wanted to get away and spend some private time with them to let them rest, and just so he could be with them. But the crowds followed. And if, if that was me, I would have been like, ugh, man, I just, I just wanted, you know, just wanted this. But not Jesus. That's not Jesus' attitude. And, and you see here what he did, and I love this, in verse 11, but the crowds learned about it and followed him, and here's what he did. He, he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. So here's three ways that our attitudes need to be more like Jesus. Number one, we need to have a welcoming heart, that we welcome people as they are, that we accept people, that we embrace people, that no, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter where you've been, I'm glad you're here. I value you. You are valuable. We need to have that kind of welcoming heart. Number two, we need to have a kingdom mindset because the reality is I don't belong to myself. I belong to my king. 
So in this life, I'm not serving my purposes, I'm serving his purposes. And so in this, in this moment, or in this opportunity, or in this interruption, if you want to call it that, here's this, these people or this person, what is it, God, what are you doing in this moment? What are you calling me to do? How can I point, to them, point them toward the kingdom so that they can know you and walk with you too? That's the, having that kind of kingdom mindset like Jesus had. So a welcoming heart, a kingdom mindset. And then thirdly, I need to focus on their needs, not my own. Um, what is it that they need in this moment? How can I give to that so that their needs can be met, so that they can be healed? <clears throat> So before we move on, how about you? When you look at those three things, a welcoming heart, a kingdom mindset, um, and a focus on the other person's needs instead of your own, which of those three do you feel like you need? Just take a, take a quiet minute and just kind of do some introspection. Let God kind of point out to you what are the things that you need to work on and ask him for help. Ask him to change you. Ask him to help you. Ask him to show you. Go ahead and just take a few seconds quietly and let God point that out in your heart. <clears throat> Father, thank you that you hear all prayers, um, just like Pat mentioned a few minutes ago. Thank you that you've heard us in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay. So with that foundation of a Christ-like attitude, we can get to the next question. And if we're talking about giving it away, I think the next question is, what is it that we need to give away? What do we need to be giving away? What is it that we need to give? <clears throat> so Jesus is welcoming and, and speaking about the kingdom and healing, and this goes on all day. And eventually the disciples come to him and they say, hey, Jesus, like, it's late. These people are getting tired. They're hungry. You need to send them away. Let them go and find food somewhere. I don't think they were expecting the, uh, <laughs> the response that Jesus gave <laughs> here in verse 13. He replied, you give them something to eat. <laughs> and you can hear almost the exasperation in their voices, like, Jesus, what the heck are you talking about? I mean, there's thousands of people here. There's no possible way that we can feed all these people. Like, what do you mean, Jesus? What are you talking about? <clears throat> um, because they were focusing on giving what they didn't have. And so that's the first point for us. And it, it seems so ridiculously simple, but this is, what, this is the it that we need to give. We give what we have, not what we don't have. We give people what we have, not what we don't have. <clears throat> It's not actually ridiculous if you think about it, because how often in our lives do we try to give something that we don't have? We take on so much stuff in our lives trying to live as if we're giving time that we really don't have. Trying to do and be everything for everyone, trying to make everybody happy, um, that's not something that we can do. We don't have that kind of emotional capacity <laughs> to be that for everybody. Pastors sometimes are really good at that, <laughs> trying to be everything for everybody. And sometimes congregations are good at expecting that from their pastors. So may we not be that. <clears throat> um, sometimes we try to give emotionally to people, or, or, or we, we're good at this in the church. We get really busy doing ministry, and we're trying to give emotionally or spiritually out of a tank that's empty because we're not taking care of ourselves spiritually and emotionally. So we're, we're trying to give something that we don't have. So that's the first thing is that, that we need to realize is that, that God is calling us to give only what we have, not what we don't. And then secondly, what is it that we need to give away? We give what God wants you to give. <laughs> give what God wants you to give. So <clears throat> verse 13 also tells us that that what the disciples had um, was five loaves and two fish. And I always like, you know, looking at the different gospel accounts. This is one of, the, one of the events that is recorded in all four of the gospels. And so when you read it like that, you can, you, it's, it's interesting what the different writers remember and the different details that get filled into the story. So John tells us that those loaves and fish actually came from a boy. 
Uh, Mark tells us that Jesus had sent them on a search to find out what they had, which is probably where they met the boy and found out that he had these loaves and fish. Um, and then Matthew tells us a phrase that Jesus said here, and it's so simple, but I love it. Jesus said, bring them here to me, the five loaves and fish, bring them here to me. And I think when we hear that, that phrase, at least my mind, initially goes to uh, thinking of it positionally, you know, bring them here to me. But I want to focus on the them for a minute. Because here's the reality. Jesus could have said anything. Jesus could have said, okay, give me those and then go buy, you know, 50 more. Or he could have said, okay, give me those and go collect as many rocks uh, as you can find and I'll turn them into bread. Uh, or if the disciples weren't listening, they might have decided to do something like that. But that's not what Jesus asked for. Um, bring them here to me. It was five loaves, two fish, nothing less, nothing more. Give them to me. Those are exactly what I want to use to show my glory. Bring them here to me. That's what Jesus was asking for <clears throat> in that moment. I wonder how many times in our lives we make decisions and do things uh, because it seems logical or because it feels like the right thing to do or because it's what we've always done, but we don't ask God and wait and listen for how he wants to guide us. Now, I'm sure that there are times that God doesn't care. You know, whichever decision you choose, I'm with you. It's fine. But maybe there are some times that he does. And why not give him the opportunity to, to lead us? Really, I mean, when you think about it, it comes down to uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. What is it, according to those verses, if you know those verses, that we're not to do? Don't lean on what? Your own understanding. Yeah, don't lean on what makes sense. Don't lean on what I know. Don't lean on what I think. But instead, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Acknowledge Him in everything. And that let Him straighten out your path and guide you. That's really what it is. Give, so here's the two things. Give God what you have, not what you don't have. And give God what God wants. Give God what he is asking for. <clears throat> so let me just uh, stop here and um, just share one way that I believe God has worked in my life over the past few years that, that I think bring these two things together and really honestly that has, have served to really transform my life in, in a great way. So I really like lists. Um, Anybody else list people? Or maybe I should say, I like crossing things off of lists. Um, because I am that guy, some of you know what I'm gonna say, I am that guy who does something and realize it wasn't on my list, so I will write it on there just so I can cross it off, okay? Anybody else? Uh, a, few, a few people, all right, that's me, yep, that's me. And, and there's some good things about lists. So, um, and I'm speaking mainly about my job here, you know, as I've, as I've worked, this is something that I've learned, but there's, there's helpful things about lists because if I just write it down, then it doesn't stay up here. I don't have to try to remember and manage all of this stuff up here. It's just, I write it down it, later on. Um, but what began happening is just, there's so much to do. And I, my list, this paper just kept getting so full and, and I ended up going home a lot of days just feeling like, oh man, I, yeah, it's just, I didn't get as nearly as much done as I thought I was going to do. I, you know, crossed a couple things off, but I added five more. Oh, crap, I didn't even think about that. Like, when am I going to get to that? Like, so I just, there was just kind of this constant underlying stress um, that I always went home with, and that was, that was always, always there. And um, about five years ago, I was hanging out with a friend of mine, a pastor friend in, in Lancaster. His name is Jim. And he was just kind of sharing with me the one thing that he had started doing. It was beneficial to him. And um, it wasn't until I was driving away um, until God kind of said, hey, <laughs> that's for you too. <laughs> um, I want you to start doing that. And what that was, was that ever since then, I've been coming in. When I come into work, and some of you have seen me here, I come right here into the sanctuary, and I just spend a few minutes praying uh, before I do anything. And it's not so much about like praying about things or talking to God about things. Sometimes it is that, but mostly it's just that I want to be in God's presence for a few minutes. Before I start doing, I just want to be. And sometimes it's like 10 minutes, sometimes it's 30 minutes. But what started happening, well, a number of things started happening. Um, I, I wrote them down, but 
as I was praying, um, something would start coming to mind, and it didn't seem like it was just a distraction, like it, it seemed like it was something from God, and so I would just put that on a list in my phone, um, and then kind of just back to focusing on God, and then something would else would start coming to mind, and so I'd put that down too. And after a while of doing that, just being with God, and he would kind of show me some of these things, that became my list of what I did for the day. Not this long running paper, but just those things that God gave me in that moment. And most days, not always, but most days, I end up getting through all of those things on my list for that day. And I go home in peace and feeling free. Um, often, here was something that happened, you know, there was something on my mind that I really felt like I needed to get to, but God didn't give me that that morning. He gave me some other things. And I realized when I got back to the first thing, that it was actually better that I thought through these things first, because they helped me to be able to do this thing better. So that was really cool. I mean, it's a novel idea, right? God knows what he's doing. Um, there were a number of things that I used to do that never seemed to get on, on my list. Um, perpetually, you know, months would go by and just they never ended up being on my list. Some of those things were important things, and I ended up having to give those out to other people to delegate so that other people could be involved with the process too. There were many other things, though, that I used to do that I realized nobody was asking about, nobody missed, so they just went away. <laughs> They're gone. Um, like I said already, my stress level has come way down. I found that I was spending a lot more time with people instead of doing stuff. And here's my favorite one. I found that I was doing less, but God was doing more. There were so many things that I just was seeing God doing, or God called somebody else to do that I wanted to do but couldn't get to. God was just at work. I was seeing God accomplishing so many things, um, and it, it has been awesome. Now, I need to tell you, it's not perfect. Um, I often come here in the morning, and my mind is just distracted. I've got all kinds of other stuff going on. Um, <clears throat> or sometimes I just devolve into, okay, God, what's my list for the day? Instead of being with him, um, there are days that I don't complete it. There are, there are times I'm sure that it's my own thoughts getting in there instead of, you know, something from God. Um, or sometimes that I just, I don't know, or I, I get confused or whatever. But, but overall, um, I'm experiencing a lot more joy and a lot less stress, and I'm seeing God at work. And recently I've been convicted that, why don't I do this on my days off too? Why do I only do this, like, here at work? Um, <clears throat> to bring it back around, here, here is the reality. With this giant, self-directed list that I used to keep and manage and try to do, I was trying to give something that I didn't have. I don't have the time to do all of those things that are on that list. I don't have the emotional capacity to be able to give to all of those people and to all of those things. I just don't. I can't give that. It's not possible for me. And God wasn't asking me to give what I don't have. He's only asking me to give what I have. And secondly, there are so many things on there like I said, a lot of things that have gone away and nobody's missed. There are things that seemed so important to me, but they weren't to God. God wasn't asking me to give those things. He's only asking me to give what I have, and he's only asking me to give what he wants. <clears throat> and, you know, yeah, let me share this too. Um, I think this could be helpful, because I, I, I do believe um, that God is going to start calling some of you to live like this. Not exactly like this, but um, I think there's something here. This is not just for me. I think there's something here that God wants for some of you, too. And so what kinds of things does God ask of me? Uh, maybe this will be helpful. Sometimes uh, God asks of me something spiritual, um, you know, like... Um, a couple weeks ago, I was planning on coming into the office and just felt God tugging on my heart really strongly, like, nope, you don't need to be in the office today. Just come away and pray. Come away and be with me. And so I did. I just rode my bike and went out to the park and just spent a while praying with him. And he really gave me some, just give me some good direction and vision in doing that. Um, sometimes it's just something normal where, okay, God is going to spend some time with you here this morning, but... He's saying, nope, you know, go do the dishes, put worship music on. That can be your time with me. Or, um, you know, like, hey, you and I are good. Go spend time with your family. They need you today. You know, sometimes it's just something normal like that. 
Sometimes it's something um, surprising, like a person will come to mind that I haven't thought of in like forever, and God's like, yep, you need to give them a call today. Um, or, wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of money, okay, here's this missionary who's in need. Uh, okay, if that's what you want us to give to them, they need it more than we do. Um, and sometimes it's something expected. Sometimes that's exactly what I felt like I needed to get done that day, and that's what, what God gives me to do. So for what it's worth, there it is. How about you? What is it that you need to give away? What is it that you have that you can give? And, and what is it that needs to change um, or happen in your life so that you can uh, begin living more like this and listening to God and spending time with God and, and understanding his direction for you? Um, how can you get more in tune with the Spirit's voice so that you can know um, what he's asking? <clears throat> well, you can come on up and, and get ready. <clears throat> Here's just a few things that I was, I was thinking about. Um, a lot of you, uh, you know, you don't have the luxury of spending the first part of your work day or the first part of your school day just, um, you know, praying. <laughs> um, but what about on the way to work? What if you turned the radio off in the car and just spent that time kind of silently praying and, and listening and being with God in those moments? Or what if you took the earbuds out of your ears on your way walking to school and just spent that time kind of listening uh, to God and what he might have to say to you? <clears throat> uh, you don't have the time or the emotional capacity to pour into every person on your block. But what, is there one person or one family or two families that God is calling you to really start pouring into and spending time with and developing a relationship? Or is there one or two or three nights a month maybe that God would call you to just invite people over and spend time with them, have dinner with them, and begin working on that relationship? Is that something that you have that you can give? <clears throat> Some of you, I, I've talked with many people um, who, who fear who, or really are anxious about um, reaching out to people and talking to people about Jesus because they feel like, man, I, I, I don't, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a missionary, I don't, I don't really know that much. What if they ask a question that I don't know how to answer? <laughs> and I think in doing that, when, we, when we're in that place, we're thinking about what we don't have to give instead of what we do have. So what do you know? What has God done in your life? Can you talk about that? I think that's something that you have to give. Um, <clears throat> What about financially? You know, maybe, maybe you've heard about tithing or, or giving a portion of your income to God. Maybe you've heard that it should be 10%, and maybe that sounds to you like, oh, man, that's, like, that's so much. That sounds really tight. I don't know how I could do that. Well, what do you have? Could you bring God what you have? God, here's my, my five loaves and two fish. What do you want me to do with this? <laughs> um, what percentage do you want me to give? Where do you want me to give it? These are the kinds of questions that we can ask God. Those are some individual things. How about collectively? How about us together? Those of you who are, are leading life groups or Bible studies or um, ministry teams here in our church, how can we collectively in our groups begin to listen for God's voice and let him direct us more? <clears throat> Here's what I want you to do. Um, some questions are going to be up on the screen here. And um, I want you just to spend a few minutes quietly with God. Those of you here in the room and those of you watching by home, just, uh, or watching from home, I want you to spend a few minutes just kind of reflecting on these questions um, and just see what God, what God might say to you. Um, and it, if something comes to mind, if God says something to you, go ahead. I want you to share that with somebody before you leave because that makes it a little bit more real. Um, but here's the questions. How can I more regularly get in tune with God and listen for what he wants? That's about, you know, this, this just getting with him, being with him. How can I live more regularly like that? And then secondly, is there something specific that I have that God is now asking me to give? So let me pray for you, and then um, I'll let Will take over, and you can spend a few minutes just reflecting on those questions. <clears throat> Father, thank you for your just awesome goodness to us. <laughs> Thank you that you want to be with us at all. Thank you that you love us more than we can ever even come to imagine. And 
thank you that um, you haven't just plopped us here on this earth and expect us to figure it out on our own. You've given us your word. You've given us your spirit. You're our shepherd. You guide us by your voice. You've given us people to surround us and support us and strengthen us. So Lord, we're, <laughs> we're trying our best to, well, maybe not always our best, but we're trying to just walk with you. There's a lot of times we get it wrong, but there's a lot of times we get it right too. And so Lord, would you just strengthen every person who's listening this morning? Would you, would you guide their steps into a more intimate walk with you? into a more dependent uh, trust on you. Lord, for those who have known you for 80 years and those who've known you for a week, there's more that you wanna give us, so guide us into that more. Lead us step by step to walk with you, to listen to your voice. For the things that you're calling us to give here on this earth people around us, and all that you have in mind. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Because this is a meditative time, I want to use this last hymn as a time for you to sing along if you'd like. The words aren't going to be up on the screen, but it's in the hymnal, number 350. And if you want to sing along, sing along. If you don't want to, that's okay too. Just think about the questions. And think about what God has given you already that he wants you to give away. And it might take more trust than you think you can muster up. But let the words of the song encourage you that God truly is more than enough and that we can truly trust him with everything that he's already given us. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know thus saith the lord jesus jesus Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. To trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Tis sweet to trust in 
Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, Oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus. A savior friend, and I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Sing it again, wilt be. trust him more oh for grace to trust him more oh for grace to trust him more lord to some level, we all trust you. But Lord, there's, there's so much more trust that we need. And I honestly believe that you're giving us an opportunity now to trust you more. Lord, what is it that you've already given us that's hard for us to give away? Maybe it's easy, I don't know. But maybe it's hard. But Lord, this is an opportunity for us to trust you even more. You are truly more than enough. Help us, Lord, to be able to give away what you've given to us so that you can use it to bless 5,000 people, maybe. Maybe it's 500. Maybe it's only five. Maybe it's only one. But even if it's only one, that's enough. Lord, we love you. We trust you. And we want to trust you more with everything that you've given us. Thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you. Amen. Take what God has given you this morning, church. Take it home this week and give it away. We're so glad that you jo chose to join us this morning. Thank you and have a great week.